Welcome to Zombie Land Double Tap, where the movie starts out classifying different types of zombies because they have evolved since the last movie. So first off, we got the dumbest and most harmless type of zombie, the Homer, because he's a retard. The second type of zombie is called the Hawking, because they're using whatever's left of their rotting brain to eat more brains. And then we got the Ninja, and I think the name is pretty self-explanatory, but if it isn't, they're sneaky fuckers, okay? Now let's cut to Columbus, Tallahassee, Wichita, and a very grown-up Little Rock. And they're kicking zombie ass at the White House where they want to stay and pretend like every single day is Christmas. But not everything is all sunshine and rainbows in the good old zombie land because Little Rock is one hormonal teenager. Or maybe not a teenager. I don't know how old she is. I'm not keeping track, honestly. But yeah. point is, bitch wants some dick, okay? And she's also pissed off by Tallahassee for being a completely out of touch dipshit father figure. And after Columbus proposes to Wichita, 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 and after Columbus proposes to Wichita, she gets spooked because, you know, the bitch got commitment issues. She and Little Rock probably leave in the president's armored and very lethal limo, leaving behind a note. And the note basically reads, thanks, but fuck you, bye. And considering how much time they spent together, once again, not too sure on the number, but they probably spent a lot of years together, I find it hard to believe that they could leave that easily. Then a month later, Tallahassee and Columbus go for a little stroll in the nearby mall so Columbus can get his mind off Wichita. And they find a blonde bimbo bitch and kill her. Then they find another blonde bimbo bitch and don't kill her. Meet Madison. One retarded ass bitch has been surviving the zombie apocalypse by living in a pink berries freezer. And Columbus decides to take her back to the White House with them against Tallahassee's wishes because she's annoying F. And he tells him that next day he wants to go hit the road alone and be a lone wolf again. But he gets interrupted by the bimbo bitch because she wants to tour the White House, Columbus. Oh my god. But in reality, she only wanted a tour of Columbus's dick. Then Tallahassee hears a noise and he goes to investigate. And why the fuck are you using a musket or whatever the fuck that is, dude? I never thought I'd say this, but a horrible choice of weapon, Tallahassee. And now you used your one bullet. And for once, actually, Columbus has a better weapon than you. Shame, man. Shame. Just shame. They find out that the source of the noise is Wichita, who came back for some guns and ammo. Because as it turns out, they picked up a hippie, and Little Rock, being a dumbass bitch, took the car and left with the hippie, leaving a note to her sister. And they left for Graceland, which is Elvis Presley's place. And Tallahassee hates the hippie because he plays the guitar, which means he's a musician. Which makes no sense to me, because he established early on in the movie that he loves Elvis Presley. And Elvis Presley is, in fact, a musician. Or maybe it's not a fact, I'm not too sure. But the second reason he hates him is because he's a pacifist little pussy, which you know, fair enough. And it raises a good question. How the fuck does this pussy ass bitch survive so long in a zombie apocalypse? Doesn't matter because Wichita finds out about the bimbo and she's like, wham, when they decide to go after Little Rock at the break of dawn. And all four of them get into a minivan which Tallahassee hates. And I understand that working cars and parts are scarce, but you're telling me, at the White House, home of possibly the most protected man on earth, there was only the beast. The most armored limo in the world. Just that. Nothing else. Else, no other cars. You're telling me? Nah, I don't believe that for a second, man. Anyway, they hit the road, Tallahassee hits the brake, and the bimbo hits the dashboard. Then they get out of the minivan and get off the bridge and go check out a new possible mode of transport in the form of an RV. And that RV sounds an alarm that attracts a bunch of zombies. And Wichita goes like, Man, we're getting good at this. Getting good at what exactly? You still haven't done shit, dog. I feel like saying this would make way more sense after you kicked a bunch of zombie ass. Just saying. So they do that, the bimbo almost gets bitten, and they meet a new type of zombie which is stronger, better, faster, stronger, and they call it a T800, like the Terminator because it will stop at nothing. So after Tallahassee christens the RV with his number three and a can of paint that he seemingly always has on him, they get to move in and immediately get a flat tire. So they make the walk of shame back to the minivan and straight past this fucked up one which is sought in very specific spots. Back on the road they start making fun of the idea of Uber, funny, very meta, then the bimbo starts looking very sick like she's turning into a zombie. So they pull over, she gets out and goes to the woods and Columbus goes to put her down, rip bimbo. Then they keep going and get to Graceland and find out that it's run down with no trace of Little Rock, but a little bit down the road, they find an Elvis Presley themed hotel or a museum. I'm not too sure. I didn't. Yeah. A, a place where you can sleep, but there's also Elvis shit. All right. And over there, they find the beast and they're like, ooh, blue clues. That means Little Rock. So they go inside to investigate and they do not find Little Rock. Instead, they find badass Nevada who tells them, you know how close I came to murdering you? Which, of course, is in reference to how someone shot and killed Bill Murray because he mistook him for a zombie. Which makes me ask, how the fuck did she find out about this story? Did she go over there herself and see the body? Or is there like a WhatsApp group for all survivors of the zombie apocalypse and somehow these guys aren't in it? The only other possible explanation is that this should travel to word of mouth. If so, I think a movie or at least a short film about just how the fuck this information reached her will be a fucking great idea, right? Who's with me? Huh? No? Alright, whatever.
I, I think it's cool, but you know, who cares? She also tells them that Little Rock and the Hippie were here, and they headed off to Babylon, which is a hippie safe haven, where there are no guns allowed, but the hippie didn't like the beast because it has a big fat gun in it, I guess, and he's a pussy, so instead they took off in Elvis's 1955 Cadillac Fleetwood Series 60, which, you know, considering there's a zombie apocalypse going on, is kept in hella good condition. Also, it being a timeless classic, I can't imagine it being any fuel efficient or reliable, but whatever, somehow they take it and make it to Babylon. Now let's get back to the Elvis Museum slash hotel, where Tallahassee and Nevada bond over their mutual love of Elvis, and they bump uglies and next day some dickhead in a monster truck destroys the beast because as the movie so eloquently puts it he used to park in Nevada's driveway and now Tallahassee is parking in it and then his nerdy psychic pops out and we find out that they're basically Columbus and Tallahassee copies they start a dick measuring contest go in for a drink and then they find a few tiered hundreds outside attacking their truck so the dickheads are like alright relax we got this but as we're about to find out they so did not got this so after they deal with the zombies they come back in for that drink and they brag about how good of a job they did while waving around the picture they took of them dealing with the zombies which no doubt was a huge contribution to how he got that fucking bite mark which might I point out none of these blind motherfuckers noticed no it was Nevada from the back of his hand how <laughs> so him and his sidekick who was also bitten turned into zombies and then they swiftly get dealt with then Tallahassee Wichita and Columbus try to hit the road in the monster truck however Tallahassee is incapable of driving it so they are forced once again upon the minivan on the road again on their way to Babylon, they find the bimbo bitch driving down the road in an ice cream truck. And she once again joins the group on their travels. So how the fuck is this bitch alive? Well, she had a very violent allergic reaction to the nuts that she was eating, which she didn't know were nuts. Fucking moron. And in the woods, Columbus shot over her head to scare her off before she turned into a zombie, or he thought she was going to turn into a zombie. And now she's here. And after some more minivan miles, they get to Babylon. And Tallahassee celebrates by blowing up the minivan. Great idea, dude, because you're not going to need that anytime soon. Also, no nearby zombies hear this. Anyway, they can't enter Babylon without having their guns melted. And they can't leave him in the fucking minivan because, you know, Tallahassee. But what I don't understand here is why they couldn't leave it next to a tree or something and hide it somewhere. No zombies are gonna want to use him, right? Anyway, they enter and have their guns melted and they find Little Rock and she doesn't want to leave and Columbus wants to stay and have a home for once, but this pussy ass place ain't no home for fucking Tallahassee and he decides to leave and be a lone wolf once again. So that night, Tallahassee says his goodbyes and leaves the hippie farm. And while he does that, he sees a herd of teen hundreds sprinting towards Babylon who are having a fucking party and shooting fucking fireworks. Fucking fireworks! Fucking retards! And here none of the zombies break off to eat an unarmed Tallahassee. None of them. He even runs over one and they just disregard him. You know? I know, I understand. Shiny lights and all and zombies are retarded and they just want to fucking go to the noise and the lights and stuff. But don't you want to have like a little snack before you get to the main course? Because technically this is just smaller lights and noise. I mean, they, some of them, at least some of them should be attracted to that too, right? Whatever. He rushes back and he tells them that imminent death is approaching. And I know that he drove back really fast and whatnot, but there's no goddamn way that they had enough time to make fun of this fucker, draw a home alone battle plan, Train a bunch of hippies, roll out a jug of biodiesel, ride on it, and a bunch of other shit. Did you see those fuckers sprint? Bear in mind he had to use roads, they're just going as the crow flies. Don't matter, they stand on a platform when the zombies arrive, they let them in through a gap in the wall, light up a bunch of biodiesel lines surrounding the zombies, and zombies that have no brains and can't feel shit should be able to walk through this, just saying. Then the jug of biodiesel blows up, and they're like, aha, you see? Our plan worked perfectly, now we're just gonna go clean up the stragglers or craw crawlers or whatever the fuck they call them. But they grossly underestimated the amount of zombies coming towards them, and with only shovels and sticks, and shit they start getting overwhelmed on top of that platform and it seems like the end for them but when all hope seems lost nevada comes out of nowhere in the fucking monster truck and this shot is bad ass so she saves them they get in she does a bunch of donuts and a backflip on zombies generally styling on them but then the truck flips and the fun's over so they get out of that and want to make their way up the tower however there are a few zombies standing between them and the door but no worries hippies to the rescue when they start throwing shit off the tower onto the zombies and they kill the line of zombies in front of them they get into the thing and go up who knows how many stairs up to the roof. Now I have a few things to say about this. A. Why were these zombies standing menacingly and not attacking? B. No way a bunch of hippies are this accurate that they can hit these zombies from that high up. Throwing shit off the roof seems hella risky to me. And C. Why the fuck didn't you close the door behind you when you are going up the stairs to slow the zombies down you dimwits? You clearly had time. Moving on. They get up there and we find out what Tallahassee trained the hippies to do. He trained them to form a gauntlet for the zombies to run down after Tallahassee so he can jump off the edge of the building and dangle off a crane as bait 
so all the zombies jump off to their death. And after all the zombies yeet themselves off the side of the building, two zombies grab onto Tallahassee's foot and he starts to slip. So Little Rock whips out a gun that she forgot she had and shoots the zombie in the head and he drops off. And that gun was given to her by none other than Tallahassee as a Christmas gift. They get him back on, hugs all around, Wichita says yes to getting married, and one last Homer zombie walks up and jumps over. Which makes me wonder how the fuck he got past all these hippies without making them scream or making his presence known in some way. Also, if this was their plan all along, they, why the fuck were they on a platform down there anyway? They should have been by the door ready to bolt it up the stairs so they can do this, right? Whatever, they drive off as a slightly bigger, happy, zombie-killing family again. Well, hold on, J back up for a second. Fireworks again? For fuck's sake, do you guys ever learn? No loud noises, no shiny bright lights, or you die. This movie gets 17 Elvises out of 3 buildings.